Hello there. If you have not seen my last video on the subject, I recommend you do so. I will provide a link in the description. Otherwise, please enjoy. Alrighty, now we are going to implement the code to play a specific note from a piano or, you know, any instrument really. Um, and to do that, we are going to make use of this wonderful gist created by user uh, Sa Saithian. I'm probably butchering the name, but anyways, this user created this frequency map for all of the uh, notes on a piano. So as you can see, where's uh, C4? Nope, C4. C4 has a frequency of 261.63 hertz, and we can use this file to uh, extract frequencies using strings or you know different notes. So let's copy this and I will provide a link to this in the description below. I'm so glad that this guy created this, it saved me so much time, so thank you. And now we are going to put all of that JSON in a file called frequencymap.json. Alrighty. Anyways, that's done. So now we are going to create a utils file just so we can have some uh, functions to read the JSON file and store its uh, values as a dictionary. So we're gonna say def read, and this will take in a path, and we're gonna say with open path r as f, and then return uh, f dot read. Okay, this will just read whatever file we pass into here. And then we're going to say, uh, define a function to read JSON. So we're going to say def read JSON. And this will just return JSON.loads. And we're going to have to import the JSON module. And then read and then the path. Oh, and this function is also supposed to take a path. Okay, and let's import the JSON module. Alrighty, that's good. And now we are going to define a, a constant variable of the note map. Okay, so we're going to say note map is equal to read JSON. And then we're going to pass in the file path of the frequency map. Frequency map. Actually, it would make more sense to call this freq map, frequency map, not note map. No, it. We'll call it. We'll call it note map, and let's rename this to note map. So the name's also shorter, and it makes. I don't know. I like it a little bit better. Anyways, note map dot json. Okay, we are done here. Let's go. Let's and create a new file called. How would we call this? Let's call this note dot by. How about that? That makes sense. And uh, we're gonna import the note map, the note map from the utils file. So we're gonna say from utils port note map. Alrighty. Now we are going to create a note class. And so we're gonna say uh, class note, and then this will actually have a constructor constructor function. This is of course gonna take in self, and then the note. Uh, string so the string represent representation of a note and a duration is going to be set to one by default okay so as you can see in the note map all of the note uh, strings sh start with uppercase characters and that would mean that uh, whenever someone uses this uh, class they're gonna have to make sure they use an uppercase character for the note, but you know, I kind of think it would be nice if they could use lowercase characters as well for the first note, or for the first character in the note, like for you know a zero or that's really low c four, and then the rest of the note, uh, you know, it doesn't matter because all of those uh, characters are modifiers, like 
the lowercase b here is a flat symbol and then well hashtags you can't capitalize and numbers you can't capitalize either so uh, we're just going to make sure that the first character is capitalized so we're going to say main note is equal to note zero dot upper and this will extract the first character of the whoops should be note string this will extract the first character of the note like i just said and just make sure that it's an uppercase and then we are going to say self dot note string or note str is equal to main note plus note string and we are going to grab everything but the first character of the note string so this will result in a uh, string like this no matter if the user uh, passes in a lowercase character as the note okay uh, now we have to set the self dot duration to the duration and then the the frequency self dot frec is equal to note map and then we are going to grab the index or we're going to grab the value rather at self dot oops self dot note why isn't that working note string okay and we are done with the init function and now we're just going to define a play method we're going to say def play this will obviously play the note we're going to say self speaker is going to be equal to none and then we're just, uh, we have to import the tone um, file that we just created. So we're going to say from tone import tone. And now we say tone dot sign and then pass in self dot frequency. Then the duration is equal to self dot duration and the speaker, oops, speaker is equal to speaker okay and this is actually all we uh, need for the basics of this class so if we come over here to main.py and i'll uh, just comment this out for now and i'm going to import or i'm going to say from note import note and now we're going to say note and we're going to pass in a c4 and we're going to call the dot play method. So now, if I run this code, it should play a C4 note. And it does. And notice if I pass any lowercase C there, it should still work. And it does. So now we can play any note on the keyboard just by calling this function. So I'm going to play um, C, E, and then G. So let's run this. So those are the notes of a classic C major chord, but we can't play them all at the same time, at least not yet. So let's implement that now. We're gonna implement a method to play a chord of notes. So uh, this is gonna be a static method. And we're gonna say def play chord and this will take in a notes list and uh, we are going to use threading to accomplish this playing all of the notes at the same time so we're going to import import threading and I know threading can sometimes be a little scary but this is actually very very clean and there's no weird stuff going on so uh, we're just going to make a list to hold the threads the note threads actually, I'll call it note threads is equal to an empty list and now we are going to loop over the notes list oops I've been coding in javascript and c++ put a semicolon there um, we're going to loop over the notes list and put them and create a thread and put that thread into the note threads so that's going to look like for note in notes list and now we're going to create the thread the thread is equal to threading dot thread and we're going to set the target equal to note dot play 
And it's important to note here, no pun intended, <coughs> that this notes list will be made up of the note class. So when we're calling dot play down here, uh, it's calling this method right here. All right. Uh, anyways, then we are going to append this thread to the note threads. So we're going to say note, oops, note threads dot append. And that we actually have to give it the thread to append. Okay, there we go. And then we are going to loop over the threads after all the notes in this list have been threaded and appended to this list. We're going to loop over the list and we are going to say for note thread in note threads, note thread dot start. And I guess I should be consistent up here and call this a note thread. Okay, and this will just start the note, uh, start playing the note. And uh, then down here, we have to stop the threads. So similar, similarly to right here, we're going to loop over the list and then join the thread or stop it. So for note thread in note threads, we're going to say note thread dot join. All right. So now we can come over to our main.py file. <clears throat> and instead of calling this the play method three times and just getting individual notes each time one second apart, we're going to call the note.play chord. And we are going to pass in a list. And the list's members are going to be those three note objects that we had there. So now this should play a C major chord when we run the code. And it does in fact play a C major chord. Alrighty. Uh, one of the last thing we're going to implement here is a rest method. And, uh, you know, just implement some delay in between notes if you want. And it's, it's just going to be the time.sleep function. But It'll just be a more visually pleasing way to do it. So we're going to say static method def rest. And this doesn't, this will take a duration, a, a duration to rest for. And then we're just going to call time.sleep for duration. And we, of course, have to import the time module. And we don't have any conflicting variable names in this file this time. So this should work. Uh, perfectly. So now if we uh, come back here, let's go back to calling the notes individually. Say note.play. So at the moment now, they'll play one second apart uh, directly after each other. So if we play this, you see there's, or here there's no or a very, very little delay in between each note. So we're going to call note dot rest and we're going to set that to one second and there should be a one second delay in between the c4 and the e4 and there you go you see the rest method is functioning so the current state of the program is actually almost exactly how it was during the demo version earlier at the beginning of the video uh, we are just missing one method over here in the tone class and this is the method to play multiple frequencies at once. And this will use the same concept that we're using over here to play a chord where we are storing frequencies in a, a list or frequency threads in a list and then playing them all at once. So we are going to say over here in the tone class, we're going to say at static, static method. And we are going to call this method create tone from array or list rather create a tone from list then this will take in a frequency list and a duration to play the frequencies this is going to be equal to one for now by default rather then we are going to make the tone threads list so tone threads is equal to an empty list and then we're going to say for freq Fre or frequency in freq list. We're going to say thread 
is equal to, or we'll call this freq thread is equal to threading dot thread, and we have to import the threading module actually. So let's do that. Import threading. All right, and we are going to set the target equal to tone dot sign, and we need to set the arguments or the args equal to a list and we pass in the frequency and the duration so that when the sign method is called the f the frequency and the duration are passed in and uh actually it should probably have a speaker argument there so speaker will be equal to none and we will also pass the speaker there too okay uh, we are done with creating that thread and now we have to append it to the tone threads. So we're going to say tone threads dot append frequent frequency. Nope. Thread. And this should be called frequency or freq threads, freq threads. It would be nice if I could use my tongue correctly. And then we're going to loop over the threads and start them. So for freq thread in freq uh, threads, we're gonna say freq thread dot start. And then we are going to loop over them again and join them or stop them. For freq thread in freq threads, thread dot start or not not start join okay and this will allow us to now hopefully play a tone from a frequency list or a list of frequencies so if we say note dot create tone from list and we pass in a let's see what was it uh 5 30 hertz and a 660 hertz and we run this code. You can see it creates a much different tone from just a plain 530 hertz or just a single 660 hertz. It creates a somewhat ominous uh, sound. And this is because this is very similar to the uh, frequencies used to uh, generate the emergency alert tone. I forget what the exact ones are. Are uh, I used them earlier in the video. Anyways, uh, we are we are pretty much done. There's a lot you can do to extend upon uh, these these classes. For example, one thing you could do is implement a track class that allows you to store a bunch of notes in an array and then play all those notes in order except in a in their own track so you can have a bass track and a lead track I'll, I'll provide a link to an example class in the description all right that wraps up the video uh, i hope you enjoyed the program i hope you find it useful i hope you can extend upon it and use it in your own projects and if you liked the video please do hit the like button and if you disliked it then please hit the dislike button and if you really liked the video, then please consider subscribing, and I will see you in the next one. Talk to you then.